Welcome! I'm Jessica, the Furry Family Coach, and in this live video, we are going to be talking a little bit about identifying the signs of separation anxiety in dogs. Um, so real quick, anybody who is watching, um, you there who's watching, if you could post in the comments if you could hear me. I want to make sure I didn't screw anything up and that um this live video is something you can you can hear me i just want to make sure i didn't mess anything up so if you could post in the comments that you can hear me i would really appreciate it um so in this video we're going to be talking about identifying the signs of separation anxiety in dogs um yesterday i did a vid yesterday or the day before i don't remember i did a video and i mentioned um separation anxiety and it's a real problem and more and more dogs um dog trainers as, as a dog trainer more and more dogs were seeing um exhibiting signs of separation anxiety um and you know for the most part if if you're not seeking treatment a lot of people try to ignore it and think it's going to go away and that's not the case um it's a disorder it's something that that needs to be addressed it's something that needs to be properly treated um, in any dog that has signs of separation anxiety. So I wanted to, um, treating separation anxiety is, it, it's a process and it's a lot more than I can cover in just one of my videos. So in this video, we're going to talk specifically about some of the signs to look for when, um, trying when trying to figure out what's not if, if you hire a dog a dog trainer which i highly recommend if you do have a dog with separation anxiety you look for a dog trainer who one um uses positive reinforcement and two um specializes in separation anxiety it really is something that dog trainers specialize in it's um much needed in the dog training field and something that a lot of dog trainers don't know how how to treat properly um usually if you find a force free positive methods dog trainer um they're either going to know how to treat it or they're going to know somebody to refer you to um for treatment in in separation anxiety so let's talk a little bit about some of the ways that we can identify separation anxiety in our dogs so, so could, that's the first step is knowing if your dog actually has separation anxiety or if they're just bored um, some dogs are just bored and people think, oh, my dog has separation anxiety. Oh my gosh, what am I going to do? And it could be cured really quickly because they don't have separation anxiety. They're just plain bored. So uh, I'm going to list some of the, some of the things to look for when identifying separation anxiety. And then we're going to talk a little bit about what you can do to make sure your dog isn't bored and that it really is separation anxiety. So before I get started, I am so excited um, to offer you my new ebook. It's called um, Seven Miracle Steps to Training Your Dog. And it is the complete foundation, the basis of everything I base my training on. I teach this to every single one of my in-home clients and I want you to have it too because I want to get this information out there. I want dogs and their owners to live in harmony with one another. And the, this, the foundation of my dog training of um, my canine commandments is exactly what's going to put you on the path to do that. So Go ahead and grab your copy, Seven Miracle Steps to Train Your Dog. And if somebody could type this in the comments, I would really appreciate it because I'm on, on live. I can't type in the comments. So it's bit.ly slash seven steps dog training. And seven is the number. Don't spell out seven. So bit.ly slash seven steps dog training. That's going to get you seven miracle steps to train your dog. Um, only positive reinforcement force free methods. I highly recommend you get a copy of this. Um, and with that, let's go ahead and talk about some of the signs of separation anxiety in dogs. So of course, um, the initial ones that we're going to talk about are excessive barking, excessive whining, um, chewing and destroying objects when, you, when you're not there. So separation anxiety, just kind of, you can kind of off the top of your head, know that these things are going to be happening when you and your dog are separated. So when you leave the house, for example, and your dog stays home. Um, pacing 
and and restlessness your dog not being able to lie down and get comfortable and relax that's a sign of separation anxiety um some more severe symptoms are going to be panting and drooling um sometimes even vomiting or uh, toileting in the house when you know they're potty trained so when you're there and you're home with your dog they tell you when they need to go out and you know you take them out and they use you know they, they go potty and everything's great. You know they're potty trained. They don't soil the house when you're there, but when you leave, they do. Um, so that can be a symptom of separation anxiety. And there are some more severe, because there, there are, you know, there's there are levels of severity and separation anxiety. When we adopted Kim, she had separation anxiety, and I would say it was a, a mild to moderate case of separation anxiety and it took me a while i i had to really do a deep dive into how am i going to help her overcome this um and being a dog trainer it wasn't something that i specialized in and now i know how to do it because i've been through it with her and now she's happy and she's fine every time we we leave the house sometimes she she'll just look up and be like yeah okay bye and she's totally fine now so but some of the more severe cases of separation anxiety your dog could actually um chew through items chew through walls chewing on um uh window frames or uh, the frames around the door whatever something that that they think maybe i can chew through it and get out and get to my get to my person, right? Breaking through windows. These are some really severe signs and, and they happen. Some dogs have this going on and it's because they have separation anxiety that needs to be treated, needs to be addressed. So, um, and of course this is especially true when they are uh, jumping through or destroying entry points, like I was saying, windows and doors. Um, some dogs, you know, they'll just go into the kitchen and chew on the kitchen cabinets or baseboards, and that's also a sign of separation anxiety, but um, when, you know, it's it's that thought process in their head that if I can get out this, this point of entry, especially if it's one that you commonly use, then I can get to my person. That's a really serious sign and it's it's real separation anxiety is real that's one thing i really want to get across to you because not everybody thinks it's a thing they're like oh they'll get over it oh they'll outgrow it and it's not the case it's it's a um there are so many things that can cause the development of separation anxiety in a dog then it's hard to pinpoint in one video we you know we you kind of have to look at your dog and specifically things that have happened to them in their their lifetime but sometimes it can be genetic just that that anxiety and stress um you know it, it can be genetic and other times we know that it's from issue from you know somebody maybe you adopted a dog who had a previous owner or, or maybe you adopted a dog from a shelter so they have those memories and those feelings of being abandoned and a lot of times separation anxiety can result from that. So it is a real thing and it is something that we do want to address in our dogs, especially if you think any of any of these items that I've listed, if your dog is exhibiting any of these symptoms, then you definitely want to take a look at it. The first thing you want to do is make sure your dog is not just bored. Now, if they're chewing through or breaking through points of entry, you're you're pretty well set that um you know your dog probably has separation anxiety but let's just go through and first make sure that it's not that your dog isn't just bored so if they're just barking and whining and howling a lot let's give them some enrichment first of all anytime you have to leave take them out for a long walk or maybe even a run and play with them and make sure they are sufficiently exercised so they're physically tired and then leave them with some enrichment so that they can also mentally tire themselves out and they have something to do while you're gone and if you do those things and your dog no longer exhibits any of the symptoms of separation anxiety then there's a really good chance that your dog was just bored and you need to continue these behaviors and these practices as long i mean for 
your dog's life because you want to make sure that they're happy and healthy. So you need to meet their biological needs. So make sure they have sufficient physical exercise and sufficient mental exercise. So if your dog is exhibiting a lot of these symptoms and they're just bored, then step up and do the things you need to do to make sure that their biological needs are met. Um, now, if you do leave them with, if, if you do, you know, take them out for a walk or a run and you play with them and you've sufficiently physically um, exercise them, you leave them with enrichment and they are still exhibiting these symptoms of separation anxiety, then the next thing you need to do is look for a um, positive reinforcement force-free trainer who specializes in separation anxiety. It's something that you and your dog, you know, you're going to have to go through it. And once you get through it, you will be so happy that you did. Um, so one more time, guys, so excited to get this information out to you. Um, seven miracle steps to train your dog. It is the complete foundation of everything I teach to every single one of my in-home clients. bit.ly slash seven steps dog training. If somebody could type that in for me, I know it'll be so much easier if you can just hit a button instead of typing it in yourself, but if somebody could type that into the comments for me, I would really, really appreciate it. Um, and with that, I, like I said, at the beginning of this video, discussing how to overcome separation anxiety is a very personalized thing for you and your dog, and it will take a lot more than one video to get through all of it, but um, to set you up on the right path, you need to be able to identify it first. So I think that's what we have sufficiently done in this video. Um, if you have any questions or comments, if you have any questions about something you and your dog are going through, um, whether it is identifying separation anxiety, whether it's housebreaking, whether your dog is barking too much, whether, um, maybe you have a puppy and they're biting because they're in that puppy stage and they're biting or anything that may be going on with you and your dog, leave it, leave your question or comment in the comment section below. I would love to address your situation in a video and get you some answers to help you and your dog because you and your dog are a team, your family. We want to make sure that you are happy and healthy together. And um, yeah, so go ahead and give this that, uh, video a big thumbs up. Make sure you follow me or subscribe to me so you never miss another video. And again, leave your questions or comments um, in the comment section. I'd love to make a video for you. And uh, oh, 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 real quick before we leave, don't forget to join the group, the Train Positive group, Dog, Dog Training 201 Train Positive. Go ahead and join the group. And once again, seven miracle steps to train your dog. This goes over everything I teach. Every single one of my in-home clients is going to set you up the foundation, everything you're going to need to be able to train your dog positively, bit.ly slash seven steps dog training. All right, guys, don't forget to like, follow me and subscribe. I will see you in the next video.